Customer success with Snap Center starts with a successful implementation, which requires proper planning. The purpose of this video is to discuss the steps necessary for a successful Snap Center server implementation. We're going to begin by looking at the planning process and the necessary considerations. Then we will review the steps in preparation for the installation of the Snap Center server software. While this video will not cover the installation itself, it will guide you through the post-installation tasks that need to be performed. One of the first considerations is what type of deployment will be performed. It can vary from the very basic to a scaled-out high availability deployment. Here you can see a single Snap Center server installed with its repository on a local drive. There are a choice of multiple application and database plugins that can be deployed once the Snap Center server is operational. This may not be the best architecture for an enterprise environment. While having the repository on a local storage works fine, we recommend placing it on protected NetApp storage for enhanced resiliency. Shown here is a scaled out deployment with redundant Snap Center servers acting as backup for each other, with a repository for each on protected NetApp storage. Setting up this high availability environment requires additional preparation steps prior to the Snap Center server installation itself. These steps are described in the Snap Center installation and setup guide. A link to this guide may be found on the resources slide later in this video. Now let's review some of the requirements for a successful Snap Center implementation. Snap Center requires an active directory environment. The Snap Center server must either be in the same domain as the application database hosts or in a domain with a two-way trust relationship. There should be users and or groups of users created for those who will be using Snap Center. Snap Center users who act as administrators must be domain users with local administrative privileges. IP addresses for the Snap Center server must also match the domain name service or DNS entries for lookup. The requirements for Snap Center are thoroughly covered in the Snap Center installation and setup guide. The server can be either a physical or a virtual machine. Pay particular attention to the memory, disk space, and network port requirements. It will also pay to make sure the necessary software packages are installed since the Snap Center installer will perform a prerequisite check at the beginning of the installation. You may also need to consult the NetApp interoperability matrix on the NetApp support site. By the end of the planning process, make sure that these questions can be adequately answered. The last steps before the actual Snap Center installation is to verify that we are indeed ready to install. Let's begin preparation. We need to make sure the NetApp systems have the right version of ONTAP installed, have the right licenses added, and are configured correctly. Also, don't forget to make sure the appropriate replication relationships have been set up for the volumes to be protected under Snap Center. Remember, Snap Center will keep the protection relationships updated as part of the backup process if the policy has been configured to do so. Now that we know the storage systems are ready, let's verify our Snap Center server, or servers if using high availability, are ready. Don't forget that for enterprise production environments, we should make sure the repository location is on protected NetApp storage. Once the installation of the Snap Center server software is complete, some follow up steps are necessary to call this implementation successful. Snap Center licensing is actually pretty simple. There are only two types. Which do you need? Easy. If you have an all flash FAS or FAS, you install a controller based license called Snap Manager Suite, which is in the premium bundle. Instructions for installing controller based licenses may be found in the ONTAP documentation on the NetApp support site. No other steps are necessary. Nothing needs to be done on the Snap Center server other than start creating storage connections. If you're going to use Cloud ONTAP or ONTAP Select, then you will need a Snap Center server capacity based license. In this case, no Snap Center licensing will be done on the controller itself. Now that the licensing is complete, there are still a few tasks that need to be done before we can begin protecting the data. First, we need to set up protection for the Snap Center repository. This is performed using the Protect SM Repository PowerShell commandlet and is covered in the Snap Center installation and setup guide. 
Now we can begin adding the storage connections for each of the storage virtual machines or SVMs containing the volumes that will need to be protected. Next, we can assign Active Directory users and groups to roles and grant access to the necessary resources for each of those users and groups. We'll also need to add Run As accounts, which are the credentials necessary for access to those application database hosts. Then it's time to add the application database hosts, which will install the Snap Center plugins themselves. All that is left before we can begin setting up protection is to create the necessary policies that will govern the levels of protection. This includes items such as retention, replication, and schedules. Now we can begin to protect the automatically discovered resources. This slide has the links that will be helpful in the planning and, for that matter, the installation process. The Snap Center resource page has links to documentation, videos, and a host of other handy information. As mentioned before, check the Snap Center installation and setup guide for detailed requirements and instructions. As is quite often the case, planning, while vitally important to any successful implementation, gets a little emphasis. Hopefully this video assisted in making the planning worthwhile. Thank you.